decided that he would like to take part in this, which is rare. <laughs> He's taking pictures in the corner. Uh, well, thanks for joining me. Uh, what a historic day. I'm not going to spend long. I'm sure everyone has been uh, watching the news. Yeah, see, okay, goodbye. Buddy's going back to watch CNN. Um, <laughs> uh, congratulations, uh, first of all, uh, to future uh, second gentleman Doug Emhoff, uh, as well as our next vice president, uh, Senator Kamala Harris. Uh, it, is, it is really exciting, and I just have to say, in the last couple hours we've been watching the news uh, and listening to the news, um, I gotta say I'm hearing a lot of talk, uh, a lot of talk about what this moment means for our country, um, but for the historical nature uh, of Senator Harris's candidacy, I hear so much chatter already uh, about what she might not be for some people. And I think we really need to be focusing on everything that she will be uh, for this country uh, and what she will be for a next generation of kids who get to grow up in the United States of America and look to the White House uh, and see Vice President Kamala Harris. Uh, it, it will be a historic campaign already, and I am really excited to do everything I can uh, continuously to help uh, Kamala, to help Doug, uh, to continue helping uh, our friend Jill, uh, Dr. Biden, um, and, and Peter and I are just really excited. Uh, we have been uh, following some hilarity online. I gotta say this uh, plane drama yesterday was Pretty hilarious. I was sitting right here uh, on this patio lounger, which I am using for a couch. Uh, uh, we have uh, uh, got ourselves a little lake house uh, in Michigan, and while uh, everyone was going on about on the internet about how Pete must be on an airplane, uh, I was literally watching uh, him and my uh, father try to fix the kitchen sink. Uh, and while I was explaining what was happening on Twitter, Pete's legs were sticking out uh, of the kitchen cupboard. So um, that was pretty fun for us to watch. Buddy, are you going to come back? No, no. Dramatic huff uh, from Buddy. Man, I, Twitter was in flames. Yes, it, it, well, Twitter is always in flames. That is what I've learned about Twitter. I, I think it's uh, chapter 16, maybe 16 or 15. I have a lot to say um, about social media and what that does to discourse, what that does, uh, what that has done to our party, what it has done to families, relationships. Um, and, uh, I think I'll, I'll let you read uh, a majority uh, of that, but, uh, I think I was pretty open about my thoughts on, uh, social media, uh, and Twitter. Uh, I haven't been on Twitter in so long. You're a very wise person. Twitter is something else. Yes, that is true. But I did see that buddy tweeted about the plane. Uh, he must have found his iPad. Uh, what have you? I know. Yes, I'm very excited to be uh, uh, up here in Michigan. We found ourselves a little bit of a, a fixer upper, so uh, we're we're doing some work. Like I said, Pete yesterday was fixing a faucet that was spraying everywhere. Uh, and if Peter were sitting next to me, he would go on and on and on about how he fixed a kitchen sink. I have heard nothing um, but the kitchen sink saga uh, repeatedly in the last 24 hours. Uh, I, I think Pete would like to add Plumber to his uh, resume simply for fixing one uh, faucet. But you know what? Good for him because I certainly uh, couldn't have done it. Um, so thanks for uh, uh, tuning in. Um, uh, you guys moved. No, we did not move. Uh, South Bend is still very much home. But uh, here, here we are for a little bit, getting some much-deserved respite, I think. Um, I don't... I had the camera is so fragile, I don't know if I can trim it now. I'm not going to risk it because it's going to fall off again. I have loved nothing more than watching uh, Truman and Buddy enjoy naps uh, in front of <laughs> Pete fixes the sink. We're melting down over flight. Yes, that is literally uh, what was happening. But, you know, uh, as I talk about in the book, every tweet that you send is like a press release. So I didn't want to cause any unnecessary news by um, tweeting, tweeting about it. <laughs> So um, thanks for tuning back in. This, these are fun. These two days are fun to talk a little bit about the book. It is so weird um, that it's out there. I've been hearing from friends uh, and family who I, I've sent it to, some folks who got uh, an early peek at the book and they're already responding that they have finished the book. The thing I love most hearing from folks is how uh, breezy of a read it was. It's very easy to read. I think it's a really quick read. I wrote it that way. I wanted people to feel like uh, they were sitting down and having a conversation with me. Um, so I think, I think it's pretty, uh, 
pretty easy and breezy. Um, and what I really wanted you to get out of this book uh, was to get to know me better uh, and, and to get to know me on my terms. And I wanted to tell you uh, a lot about the things that define me um, and for, for better or for worse. And I wanted you to get to know a little bit more about um, uh, the good and the bad and uh, how those have all shaped me into who I am uh, today. So um, it's on sale now. You can, you can pre-order. Uh, please, if you have the ability, uh, make sure you pre-order through uh, Bookshop. Please order through your local bookstore. They all need our help uh, right now. I know you can get it a little bit cheaper on a certain other website, but if you can please support your local bookstore, I would uh, really appreciate it. So I will take a couple questions and then I'm going to uh, go back to enjoy the evening. So easy, breezy, beautiful. I, I heard it. I heard those words come out of my mouth and uh, I caught myself. Which chapter was the easiest to write? Um, you know, in a way, the easiest stuff uh, was some of the hardest stuff. The, the early parts of my life, I spent, you know, a year working on, on those sections. And I get into some pretty heavy stuff in the book. Um, bullying, uh, I, I, like I mentioned on the campaign trail, I, I mentioned the sexual assault uh, that I experienced um, recently, uh, just after I, I had come out. And, you know, I had, uh, I had been able to, to seek out therapy um, and, and resources after those things had happened and they, they happened years ago. And so I have had time to, to process some of those really heavy things, but I wanted, I wanted to share them because I don't want people to feel alone in experiencing some of those things that I think we're so often told to lock up inside and don't tell anybody else about. Uh, and they define you in a negative way, but don't tell anybody and, and, uh, and, and also be ashamed of it. And I didn't want to be ashamed of it. I wanted to share it so people didn't, uh, feel alone, but in a way I had been able to process those things for a really long time and I've come to terms with what happened and and how that has shaped me and so um, I think it's a, a pretty heavy part of the book to read But in a way it was a little easier to read about the things that happened a long time ago um, And then we came home from the campaign and I really only had a couple months to, to wrap up um, What had happened in the campaign? So those were the hardest chapters to write because I wanted to try to strike the right tone and share what I thought was necessary not spend too much time talking about things that weren't necessary. So I think some of the easiest stuff was just talking about like how much I love my parents and how, how great of a childhood I had, you know, outside of what was happening at school and what was happening in my head about my identity uh, and belonging, um, but just sort of the beautiful childhood that my parents did provide us. Uh, with the camping, fishing, and bowling, and 4-H, and all of those weird Midwestern things uh, that made me into who I am today. All right, let's take a couple more. What did Pete say after reading the book? Well, uh, it was kind of interesting because the, uh, the deadline was so fast once we got home. And what I really needed was Pete to uh, focus on the political parts of the book because he's been in politics a lot longer than I had. And I wanted to make sure I was saying what I actually wanted to say. And in a way, he was very helpful um, in helping me find uh, the right tone um, and helping me reconsider things because, you know, in the end, the goal is always to help the reader understand what you're feeling and not necessarily, you know, calling out people or situations, but you want people to, I really wanted you to feel like, um, you know, you were on a fly, you were a fly on the wall for many of these experiences I've had on the, uh, on the political trail. Uh, and he was very helpful um, uh, with that section. And I don't think he... Uh, I, I guess he technically had a copy of the manuscript, um, but I sort of asked him not to read about the love story and stuff because that was the only chapter of his book he would let me read uh, before he published it uh, because we both kind of wanted it to be a surprise about, uh, you know, our story of falling in love with the other person. Isn't that a Miley Cyrus song? Oh, what? Is there a Miley Cyrus song I don't know about? What a calculated opportunist. Well, uh, that, sounds, uh, that sounds like a normal thing that someone would say on the internet. Again, I think the internet is, uh, let's see. Again, this is the Oprah book, the 20th copy I wrote for Oprah. I hope she gets it someday. I mean, I autographed a million copies of it. 
Well, I guess section three. I mean, there's so many comments on social. You know what? I'll let you read it. Are there any photos in the book? No, there aren't. And that is kind of a bummer. I'm sorry. Um, but I think many of the photos that I would have wanted to use, you can probably find on my, on my social media. There's this really cute picture of my dad and I, when I was probably 12 or 13, standing on the bank of a river fishing. I have this like camo vest on that has all my fishing gear in it and he has his arm around me i think i have like a space jam baseball cap on or something like that and it just this photo is what really inspired me to think of the title it was you know what we have to tell our families what i had to tell my father uh when we come out i have something to tell you and when i was going through photos that i wanted to use for the book that photo inspired the title uh right away but the photo the quality of the photo uh just wouldn't work uh, for the cover of the book Hi, Garrett. All right. Oh, favorite song on folklore. That has nothing to do with the book, but I, th I think uh, it's August, and I think, that's a, I think that's a hot take. Emily Vordy and I were having a, a, a go about, about the best song on folklore. Do I read the audiobook? Yes, I recorded the audiobook, uh, and that will come out September 1st uh, as well. What's your coffee shop order? Depends on the day, Tim. Uh, Depends on the day. But on the campaign, it was a Starbucks double shot. Just all day. Um, and it was very scary how you could drink them for you know 18 hours and then go to bed at night. I, I can't do that now. I can't drink coffee like after 2 p.m. because I've, yes, it is buddy snoring. I'm glad that you can hear that. But uh, that's my coffee shop order, double shots. Hi, Karen. We all miss you too. How long is the book? I think the book's pretty pretty short, actually, and I, I think part of that is because I just cut a lot, and uh, I had to decide, you know, at the end, like how much do I want to share? How much is, you know, for the good of the group, as we would say, uh, in the in the classroom, and um, I just wanted it to be a, a really simple glimpse into the life of Chaston. So, looks like you're looking at 242 pages. You look very relaxed. That is the kindest thing anyone has ever said to me. Does the book discuss LGBT and mental health? Thank you so much for asking that question. I talk about mental health a lot in this book and I talk about my own mental health. Uh, when I went to college, uh, shortly after coming out, um, some of you who uh, have heard me speak before uh, know about me running away from home for a little bit just because I was so certain that I would lose everything. I was, was uh, absolutely terrified of being a disappointment and from everything that I had learned, um, it was just simply wrong to be gay in Northern Michigan. And I ran away from home. I went to the community college. I was bouncing around on some friends' couches and stuff. And I, I go through that whole timeline in here. And I talk a lot about how I just was really unprepared to go to school. I was not prepared um, for college, but yet I felt like everyone was pushing me into college and everything was telling me, you know, if you go to college, you'll be fine. And so one, I talk a lot about how um, many people in the LGBTQ community, I think, suffer uh, from some sort of internalized homophobia, how we're constantly told uh, we are not good enough or uh, we do not fit in, we are not welcome, we are not deserving of love, acceptance, human rights, um, and dignity. And a lot of that internalized homophobia and anxiety um, put me in a pretty dark place in college. And so I talk a lot about how um, that sort of shaped my mental health and how in many ways I think I was unprepared um, for college uh, because of that. And I think that is just another thing that we have to do, you know, when we share our stories, we kind of have to peel the curtain back a little bit and talk about what actually um, defines us. And I didn't want this to just be a, a glowing um, spattering of uh, things that happened in my life. You know, that that mental health journey really shaped me uh, and it's important to talk about. If Pete is no longer in the room, I think he's upstairs folding laundry. Chaston chats back. I hope so. Yeah, I took a little bit of a break when we were... Pete, are you kidding me? Okay, but how amazing was that? <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> uh... <laughs> Can you... I can hear you laughing. <laughs> okay. Um, are you ready for all the personal questions you're going to be asked in the book tour? I don't think anyone could ask me anything more personal than what I was asked 
out on the campaign trail. Um, and I think this book is really personal. I, I tried to get as personal as I could be. Um, I think we mentioned last week, I, I may share one too many curse words, but I, I, I talk about it all. And uh, I don't think any question would surprise me uh, anymore. Okay, I said one more and then that was like, that was like two. Pete, do you wanna ask the last question? I already did. Are you, that counts as your question? Yeah. Yes, the sync repair was amazing. Uh, okay. Well, um, yes, I'm very excited for Biden's VP pick. If you weren't here uh, when we when we started, I'm extremely excited uh, for Senator Harris and Doug, uh, who I got to know very well on the campaign trail. I'm just excited for all of them. I am. I know there's a lot of chatter, and if you go onto Twitter, you'll just see a dumpster fire pouring more gasoline on a dumpster fire. But I, I just think about what I'm always thinking about young people. And I think that's the teacher in me and what young people in this country will be seeing and what this country stands for. And it's, the choice is very clear to me. If you, if you truly believe and support the LGBTQ community, um, then your choice is very clear. If you actually believe that Black Lives Matter, then the choice is very clear. And I see a lot of people in our party like wringing their hands and, and saying things on Twitter that I don't think they would ever say out loud in the company uh, especially the people that they're talking about. We have one shot to get this election right, and I'm gonna do everything I can to make sure uh, that Jill is in the East Wing uh, and, and, and Doug is right there uh, along with everybody. Obviously, I, I, just want, I just want young people to look up to the White House and believe in this country again and, and see that that institution stands for them. And, and for young people, especially you know, people in the Midwest, people in the middle of the country, or even places that where you feel left out and unloved and unaccepted and unwelcomed, that the White House is an American institution that stands for all Americans. Uh, and if you truly believe that, if you believe in restoring the soul of the nation, then you will do everything possible to elect Joe Biden uh, this fall. So I'm very excited uh, for Senator Harris. I'm excited for Jill, I'm excited for Doug. Um, and Pete and I are gonna continue doing everything uh, we can, and in between, we'll be here. Pete will be fixing sinks. Uh, Pete, Pete was chopping wood earlier. Uh, Buddy and I are a little bit better at baking. I do the baking and the cooking. Buddy does the cleanup. Truman is a perfectionist at nap time. Um, but all good here in the Buddha Judge household. Thanks for joining uh, this evening. Uh, excited to share more with you. There's so many exciting things that I can't tell you about yet uh, that will be coming out uh, in the following weeks. Uh, but until then, I hope you're taking care of every uh, of yourself, everybody around you, um, and uh, we'll see you next week. Take care.